everyone, this is Lindy. I'm Russell. From Love Crate Celebrate. And today we are going to show you how to put up crown molding. So everyone hears crown molding, or at least when I hear crown molding, I'm like, ugh, it's kind of intimidating, but it actually isn't that bad. You just have to kind of take a step back and be prepared to do some test cuts, but it's definitely achievable. So we're gonna break it down to you like beginner steps crown molding 101 and make it as easy as possible. Yeah. We're also going to talk about how to deal with crown molding and tiled walls if you ever run into that scenario and we'll also give you a couple little tips and tricks that we used in Lindy's office. For this crown, all of the crown molding in this space was provided by Matree and it's all beautiful and I can't wait to show you how we got it up easily. After the video, if you do have any questions or comments, uh, be sure to comment below and if you do have any questions, let us know and we will do our best to answer. Okay, so I'm actually very excited to talk to you about crown molding today. Crown molding totally transforms a space. This is what our space looked like before we renovated. Just a complete blank slate and this is our space after. Beautifully finished, including the crown molding all the way around the ceiling. I'll start by showing you how we added crown molding over the tile, and then I'll go through a really basic crown molding 101 for beginners on how we cut and install our crown molding. When we were renovating the office, I knew that I wanted a fully tiled wall behind my cabinets, but you can't nail into tile, so we had to come up with a creative solution to also put crown molding above our tiled wall. What we did was cut a piece of wood the same thickness as our sheets of tile. Then we used a piece of crown as a reference and nailed that board to the wall slightly above the bottom edge of where the crown would sit. This way the tile still goes underneath the molding, but the wood board is there to nail the crown into. Once that board was nailed in place, we were then able to start tiling directly under the board. Once the tiling was done, we made sure to mark all of our studs. You can see them with the green tape in the video above. That way we knew exactly where we could nail the crown into to make sure that we were hitting studs. Now that we've shown you our trick for adding crown molding to a tiled wall, we'll show you exactly how to cut and install the crown molding. There are a couple of things you need to know before you cut your first piece of molding. First, you have to know whether you are working with an inside edge or an outside edge on your wall. Here is an inside edge, and here is an outside edge. Next, you need to know the angle of your molding. Usually, the angle against the wall or the spring angle will be either 45 degrees or 38 degrees. Next, you need to know the length of your crown molding piece. We use our laser distance measuring tool for this. And you also need to know the angle of the corner of your wall. Many times the wall isn't an exact 90 degrees, so we recommend using an angle measuring tool just like this one to measure the angle. Okay, so now we're going to talk about actually cutting the crown molding angles. When you cut crown molding, there are two angles on your saw that need to change, your bevel and your miter angles. Here you can see Russell adjusting the bevel angle on our saw. Our saw doesn't have an easy way to determine the angle of the bevel, so we used a digital angle measuring tool to do this. The more common angle to adjust is your miter angle, and Russell's doing that here. DeWalt has an amazing website that shows all of the different angles for the different cuts you want to make when cutting crown. I'll link to this website below. This is the website we use to cut all of our crown molding and I'm sure you're going to find it useful for cutting yours as well. Because the bevel angle on our saw is really hard to adjust, we chose to use the compound flat method to cut our crown molding. In that method, the bevel angle always stays the same, but you're changing the direction of your molding and you're changing your miter angles from the left to the right. This method gives you four steps for whatever angle you're doing, whether you're doing an inside corner or an outside corner, and whether you're saving the left piece or the right piece of your molding. The angle that you set your miter and your bevel at are determined by the measurements you took earlier. 
So you need to know the angle of your crown molding and you need to know the angle between your walls, which is the measurement we took earlier with the digital angle measurement. For our case, it was actually a perfect 90 degrees, so we'll go with that number for our example. So here is Russell looking up the angle measurements for our piece, which is a 45 degree molding and a 90 degree wall angle. First, he had to adjust the bevel angle to a perfect 30 degrees. Since our miter saw doesn't show this easily, he used a digital angle measurer to find the exact angle that he needed. For the method we're using, once this is set, he shouldn't have to set it ever again. Next, he had to adjust the miter. So here he is adjusting it. Even though our saw does show the miter angle, he wanted to use his digital measuring tool just to make sure that the number was accurate before he started doing the cuts. A few millimeters or a slight angle off can really make a difference in how perfectly your crown molding goes up on the wall. After that, he just had to make sure that he had the right side of his molding against the fence and then he was able to make his cut. As you can see, there are a lot of measurements involved in each crown molding cut. Don't be afraid to do some test pieces. In fact, we definitely recommend it. And don't be afraid to talk out loud and say your steps out loud as you go, just like Russell does here. So this is save the left, miter right, bevel set at 33, miter is set to the right side, top of molding against fence. Okay. So now he's flipped the molding over so that we can do a measurement and cut the other angle on the other side of the molding piece. And he's measuring the length of the wall and transferring that number onto the molding so that he knows where to cut. Then he's moving his miter angle to the other side and double checking his angle again before he cuts. Now that we have both sides cut, we can take that piece inside and put it up on the wall. Then all we had to do was put the molding up against the wall, make sure that it was tight in each corner and lined up perfectly with any moldings that were already up, and then using a nail gun, nail the molding into the wall and the ceiling at the top and bottom of your crown. The gap in the corner doesn't have to be perfect because we will be using silicone to fill that gap afterwards, but if it is off by a little bit, you can use a rubber mallet or in our case the back of our hammer to just make sure that it's lined up at the top and bottom. Finally, you should always fill any corner gaps with silicone, just like we're doing in this video here. Continue these steps all around the room. And then the final steps for a beautiful finish are to putty any of the nail holes, sand them, and then paint all of your moldings. I love the look of crown molding. I think it finishes off any space beautifully. I hope you guys like this tutorial and I hope you found it helpful. If there are any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up and let us know in the comments and hit that bell to be notified of more great DIY and renovation videos. Thanks for watching.